Hey, film friend. I woke up this morning and I was half asleep and I heard the Try Guys come onto YouTube. We live on YouTube. We watch Try Guys all the time. For the two years that we've been here, we've been watching a lot of Try Guys. All of the drama and everything. So they say they have a big announcement this morning in a video called Our Next Big Thing thing and halfway through the video bones and i joked <laughs> what are they gonna do start a streaming service please follow us along you can pay five dollars a month please we hope you make this final leap with us right wicked familiar from something we just heard a couple weeks ago and then the video continued and uh that's exactly what they said <laughs> is this is this the biggest screw up they could possibly do what did they learn what did they learn? But then the conversation kind of built from there. This is the perfect first video to come back to because it's what's going on on YouTube and how it's relating to streaming and how creators on YouTube are trying to expand their artistic portfolio. Well, I guess I asked myself this question is, is it possible to become a content artist? we act like those things are really mutually exclusive that you either make art or you make content. And I would say that the try guys, in fact, their content would be art. They created a brand for themselves. What's really behind this push. And if all these guys are leaving YouTube to start their own streaming services, and then all of the streaming services are bundling together because they can't afford to stay on their own this gigantic bubble popping right now across all boards of entertainment there is a cosmic paradigm shift happening and uh bones and i are in los angeles for it we're on the ground floor we are watching the bombs go off watching and seeing how everybody fucking deals with it it's pretty it's pretty it well It'd be funny if it wasn't brutal. We want to talk about this stuff on the ground floor. We're coming at you from the calm room. We've never been in the calm room before. We got Bones right here next to me helping and talking. Hey yeah, we're floating through space. We're trying to figure this out because everything is changing. Even from the two years that we moved here from the Flatlands, everything is shifting and people are trying to figure out what their place is. This is like, we're having a massive existential crisis on the entertainment front and it's fascinating and so all i can do is report literally all we can do is make a video and put it on youtube we're not making any money we both lost our jobs we cannot find new work the reason why this channel got started in the first place was because of wild uncertainty in this world you know we started this because they closed movie theaters and, and then immediately wanted to reopen them and kill kill people uh, kill us and and keep it light <laughs> fair enough the early videos someone was like you look like you have a gun pointed to your head and I remember you saying we do have a gun pointed to our head <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what we're going to be talking about is like the grander trends of everything, of all of this. We got to watch something happen in real time over the last month. First, with Watcher, was a huge inspiration to come back to YouTube. This concept of we've been watching YouTube so long and the people that we watch are millionaires now. And they've been doing it forever and they have figured they've maxed out what they consider to be the business model and they need to change it. That just made me think, well, that's just opening things up on YouTube for us. We need to put the you back in YouTube, as we say. And so that's, you say that, right? Um, she does not. When the Try Guys dropped this video, immediately we're thinking this is a very, very, very bad idea because we watched Watcher fumble this ball so hard. We don't need to talk about like the contents necessarily, like get lost in the weeds of the details. There's like hundreds of hours of content on the comments and the dislike ratio and how badly people took this news from Watcher trying to build their own uh, streaming service and build their own path 
to the future. Watcher drops this video and it's pretty explosive. And the gist of the video is, thank you so much. We've been on YouTube for so long. We've kind of maxed out what we are able to do. We have hired all these people. We want to pay them what they have earned. We want to make the content that we want to make. And the algorithm is not allowing us to do that. Therefore, we have created our own streaming service and we hope you come along with us, right? It was like six something dollars a month. The biggest part is that they're going to kill their backlog. Completely remove watcher content from YouTube wholesale so that everyone has to jump over to the watcher streamer. We can talk about like some sort of a formula. Originally I'd written algorithm plus content does not equal cash, but you can flip any of those things around to money and content do not equal the algorithm. They're making the content that they want and they're spending the money that they want, but it, the algorithm isn't sharing their work. They're feeling like they're just dumping money into a black hole and that's reasonable. Part of that is that these guys have been on YouTube for 10 years. I only started watching YouTube five years ago, real seriously and spending a lot of time on there. Even what's changed in five years, I, I can't even imagine. So coming from Buzzfeed, I mean, really, in essence, these guys are trying to create the next Buzzfeed. Both groups came from Buzzfeed. Watcher, Watcher and, and Try Guys. Right. And so maybe that's one of the reasons why they're trying to do it this way. That's how they learned from BuzzFeed. They have more experience now, so maybe they feel like they can make it work where BuzzFeed failed. Exactly. It seems like people are taking the Try Guys announcement a lot better. If anybody on YouTube could make this happen, it could be the Try Guys because they have collaborated with so many other content creators. They have enough variety to potentially be successful. What are the things that these rollouts have in common? It's essentially the same idea. Watcher took so much heat and Try Guys, we've yet to see this. This was just announced today. We're making this video as quick as we can so we can keep a timestamp on all this stuff. Both groups have been on for 10 years. And so the way that they want to make their money is to take their audience that's already giving them the money and say, here, just give us this solid kind of group. Uh, to be fair, Try Guys, if you sign up right now, it's 20% off, but it is $50 a year, $5 a month. This was the problem with Watcher when they announced anyone can afford this, anyone. The fact is, is Netflix, Paramount Plus, AMC Plus, Max, Hulu and Disney, YouTube Premium, Spotify, these are what I'm subscribed to already. To ask anyone to subscribe to anything else is ridiculous. That's what most of these videos were actually about when they talked about Watcher and what a cock up this whole rollout was for them. But it's also interesting because Try Guys and Watcher are wanting to create a new streaming service, whereas these streaming services that have been around for a long time are merging with other streaming services because they can't support themselves alone. Right. And these are services that have infinitely more content. And arguably more resources. Theoretically, Paramount and Netflix should have more resources than Second Try Channel, money-wise. I don't think I'm telling to, I don't think that's out of line to say. So I do find that fascinating that in a world where Sony is talking about buying Paramount and Disney is talking about merging with Max, who saw that coming? Disney is going to merge with Max. The bubble pop between Showtime and Paramount already. The bubble pop between there was a Simpsons app and then FX and then Disney bought it and then now Hulu and now with Max and it's all the same eight bucks a month. People aren't willing to pay. So what exactly is it about you guys that makes you special? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that is part of the conversation that we have. Entertainers can't think that they are greater than the talent that they offer. And just because they own that talent and they hone that talent doesn't mean that I should go along with you just 
because you say so. I'm following the talent, and then I'm also going to listen to what you say as a human being, and then I'll make up my mind after that. It's hard to get into the art versus artist conversation. That's actually a video for its own sake, but I do think that's a part of this conversation, which is, did these guys actually think that they're better than YouTube? YouTube made them. Why do they think that they're, they're better than this? So... The fact that all Try Guys really had to do was not take their backlog off and continue to upload new content, pivot and learn from the mistakes that they saw. Really do it. Make a genuine transition instead of being like, hope you follow us one last time. That was a bad, bad move. It was great content created a lot of great content. It must have been the worst weekend of their life. I hope everything's good for them. What we keep coming back to is Watcher spent however many months coming up with this plan, editing a beautiful, well-produced video, scripted. They built the streaming service and it was good to go the day they announced it. It took them three days to reverse course. Now we know Try Guys was doing this concurrently. Just by watching this video that they dropped this morning on May 22nd, there's plenty of production. They filmed it however long ago. We were speculating whether the launch was originally even supposed to be today or if they waited to space out from Watcher because it was so bad that being anywhere near it is ballsy. And Bones and I had to really talk this out before we decided, spoiler alert, the Try Guys channel is actually a pretty good idea. There, there were comments being like, oh my gosh, I'm getting PTSD from Watcher. We're all terrified. Something that we focus on this channel is the disparity between the ultra rich and the poorest poor because we're very poor right now. And we live amongst the rich people and we're learning how rich people think, how that plays into the art and how that plays into our content. People want to separate YouTube from Hollywood as much as they possibly can, but they are much more similar than anyone in Hollywood would like to admit people on YouTube should be able to value what they do as much as people who are in film agreed and we talk about that all the time one of the things that drove me crazy about the watcher video was that they kept saying we want to make television caliber content and that's arbitrary that doesn't really mean anything and also like who watches television anymore which is one of the things that led us to be down with the Second Try channel. They tried the Food Network thing. No one watched the show. Granted, there was controversy during that time. The company itself was going through some massive change. The day after, we said, man, Try Guys never get into drama. They were in drama. If you watch the Try Guys channel and you watch the Food Network show, you see where it combines, but it's Try Guys trying to fit in with the Food Network, not the other way around. They're best just doing their thing. And guess what? They make enough money through their Patreon, through their this, through their that, and their channel that they can just do their own thing. It seems like after 10 years, they really want to create their own content. Unless they're willing to chase the algorithm, they're not gonna be doing the things that they want. If you're watching YouTube right now, good Lord, everyone's just eating gross food. The trends aren't even fun right now. There's no real drama. Everyone is either pricing out of YouTube, everyone's a bajillionaire or there's some crazy allegation because people are so young when they got famous that they cannot handle this world. Out here, there's no rules. People will let you do whatever you want as long as you're making them the loot. There are no guardrails and there are no bumpers, so... It's real expert level shit out here being a child and dealing with millions of dollars and people who only know how to make money off of other people who make money. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Art Linson said something to the effect of, if anyone tells you they know what they're doing in this town, they're lying to you. Everyone's trying to figure it out and it's constantly changing. The rewards of yesterday may not exist today. And this is a reality that I have been trying to get through my head for the last 10 years. What does this mean as bubbles pop, as the streaming services can't hold their own weight, but Try Guys can start their own streaming service? There's a couple of dissonant inconsistencies like that. The one I really can't wait to talk to you guys about is why do movie theaters need content so badly? And so many independent filmmakers have content to give, but the theaters won't put the independent content in their theaters. Money. What's up with that? Who said, huh? 
<laughs> well, we'll talk about it because we want to create a community for the independent filmmaker where we actually want to watch your stuff. We want this to be a conversation because we're interested in what you guys have to say as potential filmmakers, as potential audience members, and anybody in between. Yeah, I mean, I'm just a guy floating through space with a pile of bones next to me. Oh, dear. <laughs> we all need to help each other. At some point, somebody, perhaps Roku, perhaps Tubi, offered Mr. Beast a billion dollars for his back catalog. And Jimmy Beast said, if you're offering me a billion dollars, then it's probably worth six. Boss move. That's so boss. And now he owns Jimmy Beast land in North Carolina or something like that. He's independent. That's an independent creator right there. He's selling something people want to buy. Yeah, I always admire the hustle. I don't watch Jimmy Beast, but I am saying that's the move. Imagine your Try Guys. Maybe you can sell your back catalog to a streamer. Roku or Netflix or anybody that's dying for this content. The Try Guys have hundreds of hours of content and they're known, they're proven, they've made money, they have a fan base. Maybe Netflix offers $50 million for it. Well, it's probably worth $300 million. So is it worth asking the people that really like you to pay 50 bucks a month for this new content exclusively ad free which is big not everybody does buy premium but then you're thinking of things like what are the actual achievements that these creators want we know for a fact zach kornfeld is a filmmaker he wants to make feature films he can spend his life pitching to all these studios that are acting like they know what's going on while they or he can take his saved loot and he has a streaming service for people who like him and can just drop a movie on the streaming service. Maybe that's a selling point. Who knows? Hey, the only way you can see this movie is on my streaming service. Isn't that kind of the game? Isn't that sort of what we're doing here? It is part of the game. You gotta do what you gotta do to survive. When you're dealing with your audience, authenticity on YouTube is key. It's, it's what you got. And so the least you can do is take your audience by the hand and bring them with you as opposed to this watcher thing seems like it's even the smallest differences between the rollouts where it's just the difference between get on the boat or we're leaving without you and please let us take you on the boat with us we're gonna do this thing together which is on fucking brand they're kind of killing it god willing they have some patreon thing that was the other thing with watchers that they fuck their patreon which are the people that are special fans that are already giving them lots of money and they fucked them watch some videos on that because i'm not making that up out of nowhere whereas maybe someone in the comments can write who belongs to try guys patreon maybe they're 50 percent off maybe you get a free year maybe they never actually something said. hopefully it, they did they never actually said. i gotta tell you though i mean there is so much to learn just from watching their friends do it so i wholly support this i do think it's a good idea because really the only other answer is to not go the independent route this is the only independent route for the try guys and it's kind of beautiful it's kind of beautiful maybe there is another avenue utilizing youtube something that maybe we are unaware of as of right now sure but this was their option that they thought was the best for them and i can see it succeeding for try guys right like, I, we wish I, the best for watching everybody which brings us back around to is there such thing as a content artist because we learned there was an art to this rollout and there was a bad way to do it and we'll see how this one is going bonesy do you have any predictions i was thinking that it seemed like watcher and try guys were working on this project at the same time potentially together. I was thinking that eventually they would have offered a bundle package, like what, $9 for both Watcher and Try Guys instead of it, having to pay separately? Maybe they were talking about that. I don't think they're talking about that anymore. I think that's a great prediction. We have to see who actually signs up for these streaming services to Watcher and Try Guys do both come from BuzzFeed. How much crossover is there in their audience? Asking someone to pay $11 for those two streaming services is... This sounds like a problem for YouTube, honestly. Because if some of their biggest content creators are looking to become competitors, in a sense, Watcher wanted to take all of their content off YouTube. 
luckily for YouTube, the fans didn't allow that. It's something that YouTube should be paying attention to. I really don't understand how they can be so sure that YouTube is not going to be fixing the algorithm because it's dog shit right now. Sure. So it's just <clears throat> a me. lot of uncertainties that we don't necessarily have insight on. What's going on with YouTube is a symptom of something that's going on over all of entertainment. It's something that we would love to discuss with you guys because it's happening to all of us. Yeah, we want to be the hub for it. These seem like two chapters in a much bigger story. We're going to figure out this story. But we're going to see if this actually works for them. And there's a lot of reasons why it could and a lot of reasons why they can fumble this one as well. If you made it this far, we would love a like or and a sub or a comment. How do we do or this? Or a sub and a comment a or sub, a like. Or a like. Or a, a, comment, a comment and a like, like but not and a sub. sub. Comment.